Hi, this is John. This video is going to be about some standard modifications to a commercial plastic nose cone. We're going to add nose weight and install an electronics bay. Both of these things would be very useful if you were building one of the popular squat rockets where you don't have room for an electronics bay in the body itself and you may need to add nose weight to use larger motors. So here we have a typical blow molded plastic nose cone. This happens to be a Lock Precision PNC 3.9, 3.9 inch plastic nose cone, but the techniques are the similar with other brands of plastic nose cone or even with fiberglass nose cones. So the first thing we're going to do is cut off the base, this small loop, but we want to preserve as much of the shoulder as possible. So we want to cut to keep the shoulder as intact as possible. Now you'll notice that it actually rounds off. So we basically want to cut it at the edge where it starts to round off. We don't care about any of this, but we want to keep as much of the flat shoulder as possible. Plastic, of course, cuts really easily. We could use a coarse blade hobby saw, razor saw, we could even use a hobby knife, although it would become tedious and we have to go over many times. I'm going to use a chop saw because it gives you an accurate cut and it's quick, but nearly any cutting method will work here. Once we've cut off the base, we can discard it. There's really no good use for this. And we want to clean up our edge a little. Again, with plastic, this is quite easy. Just run a knife around the inside to create a chamfer and clean up the little bits left from the saw. Now you probably know it's important to wash off plastic nose cones before you begin finishing to get rid of mold release or other residue. In this case, we're going to epoxy the inside. So we're going to wash off the nose cone inside and outside for the same reason. We want to use warm water and some soap. I'm particularly trying to get the inside of the shoulder area and down into the tip where we'll actually be epoxing. So the first operation we're going to do, now that we have our nose cone open, is install nose weight. Basically, all that consists of is a slug of epoxy and shot bonded into the tip. But epoxy doesn't bond all that well to plastic and certainly not smooth plastic. So we're going to rough up the inside of the tip and install some cross braces to help keep the slug in the tip and not let it fall during acceleration or more likely landing. Obviously reaching inside the tip is difficult unless it's a very large nose cone. So I've taped some sandpaper to the tip of a dowel to help us get in there and rough up the interior surface of the tip. Okay, so we've sanded the inside, roughed it up, wiped it out, but we want some additional security for that slug. I've got this solid rod of brass. Aluminum works fine too. Any material that's sandable so that you can finish the outside. And what we're going to do is cross drill the tip here through both sides into the tip but in the cavity and uh, in a cross shape one direction, one at 90 degrees, and these will help lock the slug in so it doesn't slip down. So we drill one hole through the cavity, out the other side, B 
being precise isn't critical, and a second one offset so it doesn't intersect, but again through the cavity at a 90 degree angle. Now we can take the rod, scuff up the surface a bit to make sure that the epoxy will bond nicely, and run it through the cone. Run the dowel through both pairs of holes, cut off the excess. Then put a little CA to prevent the rod from moving while we're working on it. Now inside the tip we have a cross that will lock the slug and the nose cone body together when we pour in the epoxy slurry. Now for the actual weight itself, I'm using lead shot, such as is used for reloading shotgun shells. This can be easily obtained from gun supply stores. They're just small spheres of lead, so you can measure them out, almost like a liquid, to get any weight you want. Now we'll make our slug with the shot and epoxy. First pour half the shot in, mix it up with epoxy, then pour the other half of the shot. Now our goal is to saturate the shot with epoxy, but we don't really need much excess epoxy beyond the point where it will saturate it and fill in the gaps between the spheres of shot. You can see how the shot is saturated, but there isn't a lot of excess epoxy here. Then all that remains is to actually pour in the shot. Make sure the nose is supported thoroughly, tip down, and go ahead and pour in the shot. See how it's liquid enough to flow in, but we don't have huge amounts of excess epoxy. Make sure the solid slug in the tip. Tap it, settle out as much of the air as possible, and then let it cure. Now once the epoxy is cured, we want to cut off the excess rise. Because it's just brass, it's quite easy to cut with a small saw. And then with a little bit of filing, we have the rod surface smoothed with the surface of the nose, and it can be finished as normal. And now to make an electronics bay in the nose cone. We're going to copy an electronics bay that I made for another nose cone, actually a fiberglass one. It's a little easier to see how this works in the fiberglass nose cone where the ring is bonded right at the edge. Basically we have the ring bonded in place and the removable part just slides in then attaches with three screws. This gives us a removable bay plus an attachment point for the recovery system. The pieces from which we're going to make the bay are here. Here's the completed form. Here's a ring that we're going to bond into the nose cone. Here's the base of the removable part that will attach to the ring with three screws and has holes for a U-bolt. And here's a small section of 54 millimeter tubing that will fit into the centering ring and used for alignment. 
So here's a cutaway view of the inside of the plastic nose cone. The ring is bonded into the nose just above the shoulder. Then the removable part of the bay slides into the ring and is secured to it with three screws. So now our goal for the ring is for it to be a tight fit into the nose. So we want to be able to take the nose cone, force the ring down past the shoulder, into the hollow, and then pull it tight against the base where the shoulder flares out. Once we have the ring sized properly, we're going to install some T-nuts through the back of the ring to which the removable bay can attach. So now that our T-nuts are installed, we can mount the plate as though it were being installed into the nose. With all three screws in place, the pieces are held in alignment. You can install the coupler strip, which is held in place by the ring, and then we'll tack it with a few drops of CA. This is a very nice general technique to hold positions, parts in position in preparation for epoxing. Before epoxing the ring into place, I like to cut small pieces of masking tape to cover the holes in the back of the T-nut. This will make sure that if there's any epoxy that gets smeared onto the back, it won't go into the hole and foul the threads. And we need to, of course, rough up the inside of the area above the shoulder as much as we can to get an epoxy bond. We're depending a lot on the mechanical bond of the ring being tight fit into the shoulder area, but we want some tooth for the epoxy to stick to. Now with the ring snapped into place, we're going to actually bond it with epoxy. Get some epoxy, then use your finger to make a fillet, squeezing the epoxy into a fillet between the ring and the wall. We want to make a healthy fillet all the way around. You can feel with your finger the fillet as it smooths around. And while the epoxy on the ring is curing, we'll go ahead and assemble the base using a small U-bolt through the holes that we drilled. And then locking it inside with washers and nuts. And as always, it's a good idea to use a little Loctite. make sure they don't come apart. Not that there's a huge amount of stress on this, just general good practice. Tighten down the inside. And the outside. And there we have our attention. This works both as a handle to install it through the shoulder and of course an attachment point to recover the nose cone. We need a secure attachment point because with the nose weight our nose cone is now much heavier than a stock plastic nose cone. Now we're ready to install the electronics bay plate itself. We still haven't epoxied anything here in the base but we'll install the plate 
make sure it's square. This is not critical, but it's nice to get things accurate. Then use a few drops of CA to tack the plate in place. This just holds it so when we're epoxying, things won't move around. And then the last step is to epoxy the plate and the ring onto the base. Again, make a little fillet all around so that the plate is permanently bonded. And then once we have our fillet formed, we let the epoxy fully cure. And once the epoxy is cured, we can populate the electronics bay with whatever parts we need. In this case, I've decided this bay is going to host a real flight GPS unit which naturally is a good fit in the nose. So I hope this video has been useful in giving you some ideas about how to take better advantage of a nose cone than just have it be the front of your rocket. If you make your bays carefully, you can actually move them from rocket to rocket and share your electronics.